Getting a soil test is one of the first steps in creating a beautiful garden and landscape. One of the critical parts of the soil test is being able to properly interpret the results. This allows us to understand the nutritional needs of our soil and what we need to adjust for healthy plant growth. The soil test report has a lot of information on it that may seem a little complicated to understand at first, but it's really not that hard. The first information we see in the lab test results section is a list of macronutrients present in your soil. This includes phosphorus, potassium, calcium, and magnesium. Each macronutrient is rated on a scale from low minus to very high. In this example, the phosphorus is rated M minus or medium minus. We can adjust these levels by adding a fertilizer, but we need to pay close attention to the rating. Fertilizers are most effective when added to a soil with a rating of L minus to M. At that level, we can see a visual response in plant growth. If a fertilizer is applied to a soil rated as H, H plus, or VH, we may cause stockpiling or a buildup of nutrients in the soil. This is particularly important when thinking about phosphorus, since it can easily get into storm water during heavy periods of rain. To the right, we see the micronutrients, including zinc, manganese, copper, iron, and boron, that are rated as sufficient or insufficient. These micronutrients play a smaller role in plant growth. You may have noticed that a nitrogen analysis is missing from the soil test report. That's because nitrogen is too mobile for lab analysis to be useful. The nitrogen recommendation is based on the plant to be grown. Moving to the next line, we first see the soil pH. When the soil pH is too high or too low, plants can have problems. Each plant has its own preferred pH. That is why we list what plant we want to grow on the soil sample information sheet. A low pH means the soil is acidic, a high pH indicates it is alkaline. A pH of 7.0 is considered neutral. Our local soils are naturally more acidic than is optimal for turf or some plants. We use lime to raise the pH of the soil to an acceptable level for the plant being grown. It's difficult to lower the pH accurately, so it's best to let nature take its course and lower the pH over time. Lime recommendations are not based on the soil pH directly, but on the soil buffer index. The buffer index measures how easily soil pH can be changed. The higher the buffer index, the less lime it takes to change the pH. Estimated cation exchange capacity, or estimated CEC, is a measure of the soil fertility and the nutrient retention capacity. Generally speaking, sandy soils with low amounts of organic matter will have a low CEC. Clayey soils with higher amounts of organic matter will have a higher CEC. The CEC impacts the calcium and magnesium concentrations in the soil because with a higher CEC, the more calcium and magnesium can be held by the soil particles. Finally, at the end of the soil test report are the lime and fertilizer recommendations. In this case, it is recommended to apply 170 pounds of agricultural limestone, ground pulverized or pelletized, per 1,000 square feet and several small applications of up to 50 pounds each at intervals of one to six months until the full amount is applied. It's important to follow the application instructions. Applying too much lime at one time can damage the plants that are currently being grown. Most of the time when lime is needed, agricultural limestone, calcium carbonate, is recommended. When magnesium levels warn it, dolomitic lime, dolomite, is recommended. Lime is typically available in pelletized or pulverized or powdered forms. The pelletized is usually a few cents more per pound, but is less dusty. Either form is acceptable. Lime is slow acting, so if your soil test results indicate you need to apply lime, apply it several months prior to reseeding or seeding a lawn. The fertilizer recommendation of 121 or 211 is based on the ratings of the phosphorus and potassium in the soil and for a bluegrass or fescue lawn. Because of concerns about phosphorus getting in waterways, fertilizers with phosphorus should only be applied when the soil test recommends it. We made it to the end of the soil test results. We recommend that you get your soil tested every three years. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to the Virginia Cooperative Extension Office in Henrico County, or visit us on the second floor of the Human Services Building at 8600 Dixon Powers Drive.